Hello again, and welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Paul Shrimp here, joined by our friend Matthew Grassi. Thank you, Paul. Good, good to have you here. Great to be uh, here. Eric is off at the MACA meeting, uh, Mid America Crop Life Association in St. Louis, uh, for a couple days. Um, he's kind of taken over some of the official responsibilities for Rick Welder, who left us uh, a little while ago. So he'll be on the board and doing some of that activity which is uh, which is fun the board may have been a misstatement i don't know it's some official capacity or other so so shout rick, out to rick very totally. very important hey rick how you doing uh so so you know speaking of travel you're going out next week as well yep monday tuesday i will be in des moines iowa for the uh 4r nutrient stewardship conference i think this is a first for them for doing the 4r i think i think they've done it a year or two okay. before this but they're well, they're this will be a first for it to, me yeah so uh, excited to kind of see what's new in the world of uh, nutrient stewardship, keeping phosphorus and nitrogen out of the water and keeping that on the farm field so the farmers are you happy, bet. the regulators are happy, environmentalists are happy, everybody's happy. <laughs> you bet. So we're trying, trying hard. They're, doing a, they're trying really hard to communicate everything that they're doing as well, which is really important for both uh, national and state regulators. So, for sure. So it's a good deal. Yep. So uh, a few things going on. I said we saw a news item that came out from Reuters, and, and I think yep. stuff that we're kind of aware of in general anyway, but some of the frustrations with supply and some of the things that weather did to kind of con condense the, the spring yep. certainly manifests itself in a lot of different ways. Uh, it's um, I, I, It seems like things are a little more under control now but seems like it yeah but but it was a it was a difficult spring as as, as i mean most springs bring some sort of challenge or other but uh, but uh, it's hopefully we're settling down it looks like some really good crops i saw yeah. our, our grower friend john reefsteck was on facebook uh, standing in nice. his field and his he, they were his, his corn was already uh, almost neck high oh, wow. uh by nice. june 1st so wow. so there's there's okay. some serious movement going on in the crop nice. so so we'll see what happens there um uh, also wanted to you know mention one of the things that we watch watch been watching as you know we're or hopefully know we're we have a broad range of, of, of crops and, and markets that we cover and our greenhouse friends uh, had uh, had a real uh, ah, real awakening yeah. when Corso's uh, greenhouse in Sandusky was was um, was tabbed for 114 uh, workers in, a, in a, an incredibly Oof. large raid uh, which really is, I think, sending chills into the marketplace and, and uh, something that we're watching really closely. Yeah, just, unf I mean, I don't know what else to say. Unfortunate for the business, the families involved, all the, just a very tough yeah. situation out there, so. Yeah, we're all kind of wondering about, um, uh, you know, I know they have large contracts with big box stores, and, and ah, you, you okay. think that uh, maybe the big box stores had something some kind of agreement or other. I have no idea. We there's still details are still coming out, but uh, uh, it's surprising that uh, that we'd have a situation like that. But uh, I, you know, the workers are needed. Uh, you know, it just points to the I mean, the desperation that these companies feel when they they've got to have harvest and they've got to move products out into spring and get them into the stores. How do you how do you do it if you can't find the people to do it? So. Uh, yeah, well, well said, Paul. I mean, and even in our markets, it's that's all we hear is how how tough it is to find labor and, and kind of keep your labor locked in. And sure, this certainly makes that more of a challenge. Absolutely. Well, we wanted to mention a couple of other things too. You know, we, we saw that Bear came up with a with a new logo. Uh, I did a little research and found out that they've they've uh, they actually don't know exactly how that logo started. It was really? uh, it was. Uh, there's the Germans two, don't know that. There's two, can you believe it? There's two <laughs> separate stories. Yeah, usually they're quite well they're organized. Pretty, there's, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's two distinct stories. One starting in the 1890s and one in the early 1900s. Uh, and so I we don't really know exactly how old it was. It was patented in 1904. So they've had the cross logo for a long time. You know, it's uh, it's it, it's weird to see the Dupont oval go away. It would have been you know yeah. doubly weird to see the bear cross somehow disappear or change with uh, with the with the Monsanto merger. But no, the name continues. The logo continues. The logo is slightly different, uh, reminiscent of the Cleveland Browns logo changing with a slight color change, uh -huh. <laughs> color palette change more than anything. But uh, but it's interesting. It's good to see that uh, that moving forward as well. 
And then uh, I know you're, uh, you just had a couple of uh, uh, really good uh, visits with, with precision really companies. Really good visits, yeah. 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 And in and pretty diverse business models. I mean, was Very it? different, um, and, and that's great to see. You know, we, we need to get a taste of kind of how everyone does everything a little bit differently. So that first visit was up in Portland, Oregon. I was uh, hanging out with the Valley Agronomics guys. They're a traditional crop input retailer out of uh, Idaho, who's also got some, some territory in Oregon. And they uh, just very cool how they're uh, structuring their program and uh, tiering everything up to make sure that uh, they're, they're getting, getting money for those services that they're giving to growers. And then uh, on the opposite side of the spectrum, you had uh, my visit down in Kentucky with the Integrity Ag Group guys and Heath Conklin. Uh, really a, just an awesome two days of visiting growers and learning about how those guys go to market. And it's a, it's a little bit different from Valley. So uh, mm -hmm. both those stories will be in the, the upcoming Precision Ag Professional. So if maybe you're looking for some new ideas for your business or are kind of wondering how some guys are doing some things differently, it might be might be worth a read. I don't know. Cool. Well, yeah. that's great. Uh, just one other thing to mention, of course, uh, mug of the week. New mug is from, uh, it's, it's, it's a little more commercial, and I apologize. This is from uh, Ernie over at the EFC Systems, who sponsors the uh, Precision Ag Accelerator, um, and that's coming up uh, at the end of June, so in June 26th through the 28th in uh, Brookings. I've talked to about it uh, a few times here, but just to mention, um, mention that that's yet another place where we're going to talk about the diverse business, uh, I guess, strategies that, that the different retailers are using. And we still have some places open for, uh, for anyone who's still interested in coming. You know, send me an email to talk about it or drop, uh, you know, drop by precisionagaccelerator.com and find out a little bit more about that agenda. But we're really going to dig into the business side of precision. We're not talking agronomy there. That's, uh, that's not our purview, but how you run your business and the different approaches you can take to business management and, and is in retail uh, when it comes to uh, precision is going to be something we cover. Nice. So, man, Heck yeah, should be fun. And you'll yeah. see both of us there. Yep. So that we'll be double there. bonus, right? Heck yeah. All right, so that's, <laughs> this, that's it for this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week.